So Father, we want to thank you again for an amazing time. We thank you for the privilege of being here again. This is just a wonder that we find ourselves in the month of September, my God. This is the ninth month of this year. That means your grace and your mercy has preserved us for the first eight months. We thank you for carrying your church thus far, the prevailing and the borderless church. It's a mystery how you continue to help us every single week. And it keeps on getting better and better and better, which is in fulfillment of scripture that says, the path of the just shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Father, we pray that you will continue to please help us keep on carrying your church. You are the leader. We follow you. Keep leading, Lord, and we will follow gladly. We see your hand at work. Mighty testimonies. Good God Almighty. Mighty testimonies have already begun to come forth. This is the hand of Jehovah at work. We bless your holy name. May your name be praised forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Holy Spirit, please back up every word that will come forth from me, even today, with your power. And let men know that Jesus is indeed who he says he is. We glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I am always excited, as you know, to bring forth the word of God. It is a privilege, a very, very unique privilege, that you are counted worthy by the election of grace to bring forth the message of truth, the message of light, the message of hope from the very, very Holy One of Israel himself. We're going to be continuing the series that, by the grace of God, we began last week at the PBC Church. And that series is Lessons from the Life of Jesus Christ. The Lord has told us very clearly, for the next season, you're going to be studying me more carefully, more intricately, and you're going to be talking about my life to the world. And that will be your message. And so we are messengers. We don't get to choose the message. The message chooses us. And so we only deliver that which we are told to deliver, how we are told to deliver it, in the manner that God wants us to deliver it. That's what it means to be a messenger. We try to obey and follow to the letter. So we pray that this series will bless you in the way we know the Prevailing Life series, which was the last series, blessed you. So last week we began and we unpacked a few things from the first couple of verses we studied. The anchor book, if you will, for this new series, and in this instance, the chapter of focus today is the continuation of chapter 1 of the book of Mark. Mark, chapter number 1. Last week, by the grace of God, we covered the first couple of verses, and we extrapolated a few very pointed lessons and key facts and truths that defined the life of Jesus Christ even before he came. We established very clearly that Jesus was so unique that he required a forerunner, good God Almighty, to go ahead of him. And that forerunner had a singular message. The forerunner was John the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Today we're going to be continuing by the grace of God from verses 9, verse 9 of Mark chapter 1. Verse 9 of Mark chapter 1. Okay. Uh, maybe before we do that, I should probably just say, you know, the last few verses from last week so that it transitions properly. So I'm going to read again Mark chapter 1, right, from verse 7, so that you see the transition here. This is the transition of baptism. This is the transition of baptism, right? Why is it important to be baptized? Baptism means baptizo, submerged. Baptism is a Greek again word from the root word to be submerged into something. I pray for somebody watching us right now that by the time we continue today by the help of God's Spirit, your entire life will be submerged into Jesus Christ. And that is what it really means to surrender. Yes, you are submerged, occupied, fully governed by the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I pray you will surrender to Him. I pray I will surrender to him. 
in any area of my life and your life that we're still struggling to be baptized by the administration and the governance of Jesus Christ. I pray you will submit today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's beyond water. Hey, it is a deeper dimension. There is something called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the one who administers that. So let, let us look at this very carefully. Mark chapter 1. This is the transition now from last week's into this series today. This part of the series. Mark chapter 1 and verse 7. I would read New Living Translation of Scriptures. NLT. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am. Mm. So much greater that I am not even worthy, my God, to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. This is a message to all of you who are messengers of the gospel out there, or those of you who are, will be messengers of the gospel. If you will be a messenger of the gospel, you have to be a man or a woman that is given to a posture of humility. Look at the way John the Baptist, with the anointing he was working with, described himself when juxtaposed to the idea of Jesus Christ. We don't even come close to being in the same breath of picture. Jesus is Lord, period. We are but messengers at best. That's it. The messenger must understand his place and he must understand who he is talking about. The Lord Jesus Christ. John the Baptist said, I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the very straps of his sandals. What a posture of humility. Verse 8, John continues to say, I, John, I baptize you with water, but Jesus the Christ he will baptize you with something more than water. Water can be dried up. It's rainy season and then it's dry season. Water can evaporate. Mm. Water can lose some of its power. But Jesus comes with a different level of administration and governance and baptism. Jesus will baptize you, I, with the Holy Spirit, His own Spirit. And with that baptism, you can then be qualified to enter into today's teaching, which is the teaching on how to overcome temptations. Without the Holy Spirit's help, you don't stand a chance. That's the reason why the world is filled with carnality. I'm talking about something that I know practically. I try so hard to beat sin and temptation by my physical strength. It's impossible. You need a greater economy to be engaged. You need a higher economy to help you and I in our lower states of this human carnality. And that higher economy is the person of the Holy Spirit. The baptizal dimension of Roach Elohim that is at work within you that begins to be a work of wonder that makes you a wonder unto many. Psalm 71 and verse 7. KJV. I am as a wonder unto many because you have been marvelously helped and God is your strong refuge through the help of the administration and the governance of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So let's continue. Look at verse 9 of Mark chapter 1. One day, Jesus now is come. Jesus came from Nazareth, which is in Galilee. And John baptized him in the Jordan River. Hmm. Verse 10. As Jesus came up out of the water. Sky. I like this. As Jesus came up out of the water. I pray you will come up out of your first degree of anointing, which is water baptism. And you will move into the secondary degree of grace and endowment, which is baptism oh, with the Holy Spirit. And then you can begin to travel and prevail and do exploits and do all manners of amazing wonders. You become a sign and then you go beyond being a sign. You become a wonder. Oh yes. Oh yes. So look at this. As Jesus came up out of the water, everyone has to come up out of the water eventually. May you come up out of the water in the name of Jesus. May you come up out of your first level. May you come up out of your current level. May you graduate in spiritual maturity and in consecration above all else in the name of Jesus Christ. As Jesus came up out of the water, 
Verse 10, he saw. I, you cannot see until you have come up out of the water. And there are certain things you would not pick up on. There are certain signals in the spirit realm you cannot see until you've been granted ascension by the spirit. He saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dog. And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son. Capital S. Look at that. Capital S. KJV says, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. This says, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. Can I begin to pray for somebody right here, right now? That from today, by the reason of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you will begin to live out the fruits of the Spirit. Your life will give God joy. Oh, the Father will endorse you with grace out of Zion in the name of Jesus Christ. Like Jesus needed this before he began his ministry, you need it before you begin your Christian walk. You cannot prevail over temptations. You cannot live a life that will make Jesus pleased and make him happy if you do not engage who Jesus engaged. You got to use what Jesus used. And that is the administration, the help, the engagement of the Spirit that came upon him. And that is the Holy Spirit. Oh yeah. Then you have a chance to prevail. So what are some of the lessons we're going to pick up from this? Very quickly. Verse 8. The pastor, the man of God, administers baptism in water. The administrator of baptism in the Holy Spirit is Jesus the Christ. He is the one that administers it. Verse 8 of Mark chapter 1 clearly spells that out. What other lesson do we learn? Even Jesus had to be baptized by the Holy Spirit before he could begin his ministry. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the power of God. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Ephesians 3.20 Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that is at work in us, KJV, that worketh in us. The power that is at work in a believer who has been baptized is the Holy Spirit, the very power of God that is at work within a person. Yes. And then, very quickly, you see verse 12, I continue. Right after the endorsement came from heaven, you will be amazed to find out that the first thing that the Spirit of God did was to test the power that was at work in Christ. And that is to take him to the wilderness of temptation. Verse 12. The Spirit then compelled Jesus to go into the wilderness. <laughs> the wilderness is not fun, y'all. I got to be very honest with you. You cannot pray away the wilderness. Every believer, every Christian, everyone in life must of necessity go through their own wilderness it is a must it's not optional it is mandatory so praying against wilderness experience is anti-biblical it doesn't work and of course it's not even, the prayer is not going to be answered because certain things are built only in the wilderness experience everyone has to go through it so is there someone watching right now that may be going through what seems to be a season of endless barrage of seeming attacks from the enemy's camp like Jesus Christ went through. Maybe even a season of stagnation, a season of testing where your patience and your long suffering is really being tested. Can I encourage you? Rejoice, precious one. God is with you and God is for you. God is working out something within you and he will carry you through this season. And I pray that the same spirit that helped Jesus Christ to prevail in the wilderness of temptation, he will help you. You will not compromise. Mm. That's a prayer right there. Somebody on this current platform right now that is streaming live, you are about to compromise. Please do not compromise. Can I please give you this word? This is a word I just really heard that right now in my spirit. Please do not compromise. Don't compromise. Hebrews 10, 23. Hold fast to the profession of your faith without wavering precious one because faithful is he who has promised don't compromise don't compromise oh don't compromise please don't compromise god is for you the wilderness experience is never forever you will eventually come out 
Jesus went through it. So, of course, we are going to go through it as well. Don't compromise. Hashtag, don't compromise. Please put it in the chat box. Don't, just don't compromise. Jesus did not compromise. Don't compromise, precious one. Stay true to your calling. The calling of salvation. And Jesus will help you by his spirit. Now look at this. It says, The spirit began his work and compelled him to go into the wilderness. And then, temptation began. Men and brethren, no one, no one that will ever do anything and matter in this thing called the Christian race will ever really triumph without being tested. By the way, there are also dimensions of power that will never be unlocked unless you are tempted. You tempt, you are being tempted, you pass the test. God the Father is greater pleased with you. He releases a different dimension of power. In this kingdom, your authority is given to you by consecration. After you've been granted the authority to be a son, John 1 12, for as many as received him, uh, to them he gave power, exousia, authority in the Greek, to become sons of God. So now you're a child, sure. But then there is a greater power, which is dunamis, that is at work in you. To go from exousia, child, to dunamis, mighty workings of miracles, whereby the demons know that you are different. You've got to go through temptation. And you have to pass the test. There is no shortcut about this. And there is no, you know, bypassing it. You've got to go through it. You've got to go through it. So I want to encourage you. Please, don't compromise. That's the message for today. Don't compromise. There is a greater future in Christ Jesus with you. And I pray you will just see that which God sees in you. And you begin to align yourself accordingly to what God has for you. You might be saying to yourself now, even as I begin to bring this to a close. Hey, listen to me. Uh, Danny, I, I don't know what you're talking about. I fall into temptation every single day. I even messed up last night. I don't really stand a chance. I'm very weak. Sin is dominating my life. It is because of you that Jesus Christ has arranged today's service. We welcome you. We welcome you. Come, come, come home. There is a way to live. And the Spirit of God will help you prevail. What you need to do is acknowledge that you have sin. Confess your sins. Repent of them. Acknowledge Him as Lord over your life. Invite Him into your heart. He will begin to teach you how to do this thing called life. And you will realize that you are winning every single day afterwards. So, can you just repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, I haven't really done well with the temptations of the past. I have caved to the temptations of the past. I have caved. I have caved. I, I just messed up. But Lord, I am tired of living a life of perennial sin. I really want to do this thing well and right. I realize that my way is not going to lead to eternal life. So please forgive me. I thank you for paying the price. I thank you for dying for my sins. I accept your love. And I recognize and I confess that you came to this world and that you died on the cross of Calvary for me and that your blood was shed for the remissions of my sins. So therefore, I receive the sacrifice and I receive repentance unto life in Christ Jesus. Come into my heart as my personal Lord first and then as my personal Savior. I thank you because I am saved. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Do not miss next week's service. It's going to be a very, very amazing one. <laughs> We're going to be continuing this incredible series on lessons from the life of Jesus Christ. And next week, Sunday, God's Church, PBC, turns three months old. Hallelujah! Glory to God forevermore. God is helping us. God bless you, and I hope to see you next week. For now, enjoy the rest of the service today. God bless you.